Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting. Wait a second. Where the hell is everybody? All right, you know what? It's that. It's the Adam and Ann show. So I guess the explosion that killed Chaplain Valencio also took out the Amira and Booker, and they're all dead. So uh, how how you doing, Ann? So Thanks Nomi wins for Verona. You did. You did. That's it. Ta-da. You won. <laughs> Hooray. Good show. 17 episodes in and Nomi Ka wins the great far Verona. Well, before everybody else gets back, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the deep, the deep secret of what far Verona is. No, I won't do that. Um, so hello. Hey, look, it's bronze. Hi, bronze. Uh, so what you been up to, Anne? How you been? Good. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing a lot of blackout, which is the Call of Duty VR mode which is i'm really excited about it's really fun right that's right so it's help me understand because i'm a a, the last call of duty i played was like modern warfare 2 so like okay what what is what is blackout mode like what's the deal so they released call of duty black ops 4 which is like the full game it has multiplayer and zombies just like the previous call of duty games um but this one has blackout which is the battle royale mode so it's i mean it's basically Uh, just call of duty with battle royale yeah um, sure. And it's so the same same, like, same deal, like the circle yeah. and the circle closes, and you pick up weapons, and then you okay, mm-hmm. all right, yeah, that's cool. Um, but it that's plays cool. really smooth, which I'm a huge fan of, and I think that's a lot of people are pretty happy with how how smooth it is. But there's still some well, some things. Yeah, I mean the I, I can see I can see like beyond like most most people play battle royale type games. I'm gonna assume in third person, right? If I'm thinking of like PUBG and like obviously like Fortnite, it's like so. Besides the f- the first personness of Blobs, because I assume it's it's not third person, right? Correct, it is first person. Black, black yeah. yeah, in first person. So besides that, like they're pretty, the like the gun stuff is probably pretty different than PUBG. Like I, I can see there being a p- an appeal. Like I think if you're if you're into the multiplayer of of Call of Duty, that it would be like a thing that would appeal to you. You're digging it. Yeah, I mean, I never really played any of the Call of Duty games. Really, I mean, I kind of played them a little bit. I remember one time JP and I tried to play a multiplayer, or no, it was a, it was like the single story campaign for one of the Black Ops games, and it was, I don't even, I think we didn't even finish it because it was so bad. <laughs> um, so that's like I think my last experience with mm-hmm. Call of Duty. Um, but right. I've been really looking forward to more developers getting in on this. Um, on the idea of battle royale because I like the idea of it as a concept. I just feel like there haven't yeah. been really any games that like, have done it well. I feel like a lot of people talk shit about new games that come out doing the same thing that old games or existing games do, right? When like a game comes out and people are like, oh, another battle royale game, which like I get, but like people weren't like, oh, another card game when Hearthstone came out, or probably some of them were, but they're idiots and like we this is how game development works right like there's iterations of stuff and new things that come out and like yeah huh yeah well there's just been so many like versions of battle royale games that have been kind of not done very well or just not in this exact kind of way that i'm looking forward to so i don't know i'm still i still think that there's ways to improve upon the genre so yeah well that's what you hope right yeah. What's up, Bronze? I think I fixed my sound. Nice. Yes. Hello. I can now hear you. Hello. Hi. So one more thing. And how many people today have given you shit about not wearing a black shirt? Uh, I don't know. I, this is the first anyone has seen me. On the Good. Internet, okay, so. cool. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll count every day. I have, I have two gray shirts, and every time I wear them, people are like, what's wrong, Adam? Are you okay? Is everything all right? Are you trying to tell us something? So I figured you probably went through that, uh, that too. Yeah. Um, hi, Max. Thanks for joining us. How you doing, buddy? Hello, Max. <laughs> You're speaking I'm sorry. To me? I don't know what I said. Yes, I am. I, am I was very ready. You, uh, you, you say hi to me early, so I was like, I got a couple of minutes. <laughs> no, what's up? <laughs> How are you? How have How's you been since going? last night? <laughs> I've been good. Played a little bit more Red Dead, getting closer to ending the game. I saw Back that. You were Black playing Water. it last night, hey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've made it to Blackwater, and I was like, this is a good stopping point, because after that, you have a little, there's still d- a decent amount of story left, but, um, you know, I feel like I'm probably knocking out in like one more stream, stream and a half or something like that, depending on how much I do. 
Good game. Cool. Still holds up it pretty is a well. Good game. There's some wonkiness in there that's it's fun. I never realized how much fun I could have with the lassos, making the NPCs do silly ass shit. If you just keep them on a lasso and just, much like how Adam keeps us on a lasso, keeps us doing silly <laughs> ass shit. Um, no, you can, they like flop around and like just keep doing this animation where they're just like, Bleh. they just look like a fish constantly. <laughs> so I put it to all sorts of silly music and, you know, because <laughs> I'm yeah, easily yeah, that serious. That's serious, serious content. Yeah, I, you know, I feel like when a, when a new Rockstar game comes out, I'm usually like, whether I'm actually interested in the material of this game, like I'm not a big, I'm not a big like Westerns kind of guy. Like I just, I'm not, but I'm like, you know what? I'll play this and I'll probably enjoy it because I feel like of, of all of the game studios that I can think of, Rockstar has the most cinematic approach to games. Like when I play their games, I feel like I'm watching a movie and not in the sense that like, like in the sense that they obviously watch movies and understand film and cinema. Right. Like, and I'm like, okay, cool. I feel it. I like, I can, I can feel that, that inspiration in it. So I know that even if I'm not a huge fan of the genre, I'll like, I'll have a good Rockstar time. over Naughty Dog for cinema, cinematic I think, video games. I think Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog has one kind of thing they do. Whereas Rockstar applies that cinematic approach to a variety of, of genres, right? Like Naughty Dog stuff all feels sort of the same. And I guess you could say that of some of the Rockstar, but I think it's, it's pretty close. So that's a good point. Mm. Yeah. I just, yeah. I love movies so much and I just want that. I just want that so bad. I want it to feel like, like movie time, because that's for me, that's the high water mark of, of like what media is like. And why don't you Reddit go watch a movie? Like that. Adam, we're here to play video yeah, games. Yeah, dude. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You're only allowed to enjoy one media. So that's true. <laughs> I guess. Mix ever at all. Yeah. Yeah. You're only allowed to enjoy one thing. So that's um, cool. one thing just gonna to, to thing, add to your, you know, point about Rockstar, like having very, very good yeah. cinematic eye and attention to detail in that regard. That's one thing I love about Rockstar is just their custom made, like not no bullshit, no like, hey, we just cobbled this together. No Mass Effect Andromeda zooming in over the right shoulder. And then that that's your cutscene. That's your cutscene for the dialogue. Like they're all like handcrafted. The cuts are intentional with purpose. And they, they do it really, really, really well. There's I mean, obviously it, it takes a lot more time to to do that, you know, for every single cutscene. And I don't know, I would assume in traditional Rockstar style, all the cutscenes that matter that are pretty important. If it's not like just like an NPC going, Hey, I lost my horse, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. going to be, you know, like the same that it's been in Red Dead Redemption, the first one. Even those cutscenes back then, like they still love really I'm like, these cutscenes are way better than most of the shit that comes out <laughs> like, well, today. Cutscenes. <laughs> And, and as somebody as somebody with a, a background in machinima, right? Like cutscenes are just creating. They're they're very similar to creating like a, a movie shot or a, a TV show scene in that you're just using different tools. Like they that's where that's where Rockstar stuff really shines. Uh, mm -hmm. In that they're like, well, now now we have this very controlled thing we can tell you about, and we're going to give you that that experience. So now, if only they'll do what every game is doing now and give me a photo mode and or a, there has to be a photo mode in there, but and or a theater like replay system I can mess around with because that would be fun. I still wanted to make a, a yeah. Western. Show. No one will watch so, it. So I mean, I guess was a dead art form, but I'll make it maybe. <laughs> I guess that's the, I guess that's the question, isn't it? Like is, is video mode the next photo mode? Like when, when photo mode has reached its course, is there is somebody going to pro program something in where you can be like, all right, pause. Let's do the last two minutes from every, any possible angle. And like, yeah, mm, mm, that stuff's cool. Let me tell you something, I like though. it. I've seen talking to maybe machinima isn't a dead art form. It's just changed. All right. I've watched <laughs> some serious Fortnite machinimas. Whew. Let me tell you. Hey, Red Knight, what are you up to? Oh, I'm just getting some noobs. <laughs> and then they play yakety sax. You know, I don't yeah. know. No, do the whole song for me. I don't, remember, I don't know what the Yakety Sax sounds like. Thank you. Okay, now play it. Now play it on one of your various musical instruments. <laughs> <laughs> we'll spare Still them. Up we'll a spare them it's that. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it, I mean, Red Dead, obviously Red Dead's the thing, right? Sorry, Anne. Go ahead. Doesn't it release like during TwitchCon? Yes. Red Dead? Oh, okay. Yes. There was yep. some, there was some, tw there was some Twitter discourse and I'd love to, cause we're all, we're all going to TwitchCon, right? Yeah. Everybody, mm -hmm. Max, you're going. 
Yeah. Yeah, okay. cool. I meant to be muted. Was there was there ever a point where you're like, I should just stay home and play video games instead? That would be better for my career as a broadcasting individual. No. No, because I don't want to play Red Dead. <laughs> no. um, what was it? What was remember... it la- wasn't there something last year too? No, it was a couple okay. years ago when they announced Prime, and so many people left TwitchCon to go home early because they announced Twitch Prime. Right. There were a that lot of hustle, people who just. We're just like, all right, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Canceling all of my other stuff. I'm gone. I'm going home. Yeah, burn these panels down. I'm out. Yeah. And then yeah. that was the year after that, Twitch was like, yeah, we won't. If we announce anything at TwitchCon, we're not going to like start it until after everyone has returned home because they realized what a mistake that was. It's kind of, kind of makes sense when you fundamentally announce something that changes the game in a lot of ways for a lot of broadcasters. Maybe, yeah. maybe don't do that when most of your broadcasters are at your event supporting you. At your event, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard, yeah. I, I saw, I saw like a leaked document that said that they were going to release this thing where if you don't press the button in the next 24 hours, it'll just delete your Twitch account and refund all your subs. <laughs> uh, and they're going to announce it on the first day of TwitchCon. So, yeah, everybody get ready. Get ready for that. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I I I have I think and a lot of people do. I have a sort of love-hate relationship with like game releases and game conventions and like being in person versus being at home and like the grind as as you put it, uh, Max. And it's like, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like you have to make that that decision. But I definitely I, f- I fall in the like go to the thing and do the stuff. Um I I think there's way too many people misjudging the impact it'll have for their channel like a lot of people think that's mm. like this is make or break for me like motherfucker everybody's gonna be play- doesn't matter if broadcasters like there's still a significant amount of larger broadcasters that are not going to be going to put twitchcon anyways and are going to be streaming that game like people are assuming that it's just like every big broadcaster is gonna be a twitchcon and this is my moment maybe you'll get some more viewership i'm not saying you won't get a little bit more increased viewership but it's such a big release that it's bigger than TwitchCon. It's bigger than than all that shit. Like everyone and their mother is going to be streaming that game. So I'm just, you know, wiping my hands of it. I'm like, I'm not, I, I usually don't pay attention to that whole rat race of like, I got to be the first. Sometimes if I get mm-hmm. a game early, great. You know, I recognize the value in that. I'm not saying that there isn't, but yeah, it's not going to be a make or break channel for a lot of people. And if it is, and some viewer in this in, in, that streams is like, well, I was now, now look at me. Ha ha. Then t- yeah, fuck me, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's the thing is there, there in all of the conversations I saw online about it, there were people saying like, well, what if this is your big game, right? What if, what if this is the thing that's going to make your career? You're some, you're going to get noticed. And you didn't go and do that thing. And it's like, you got to make these decisions as they come like you can't you can't just be like well i have to i have to just stay home and stream all the time because you never know this could be the con where you like meet the person that you collaborate with that'll like blow up your your streaming there's a lot more yeah as as somebody that's that's you know i'm pretty sure we all can agree here but as somebody that's been to these cons a lot you have no idea who you're going to meet you have no idea what kind of business contacts you may or may not meet or just colleagues that you meet that you you know end up becoming friends with it leads you to, to more opportunities and all that stuff. Case in point, JP, you know, like if I never met JP yeah. and went to a con and, you know, ended up getting I met, along I with met stuff. Yeah, yeah, I met I Wheat and JP at uh, PAX East. I, that's definitely helped me so. in, in my career and what I do. So don't smile, JP, behind the key. Mother. <laughs> I hear you smiling. Um, bronze, I'm going to, I want Bronze, I want to put you on the spot. Do you remember, do you remember when we met? Do you remember when that was? We had like a very brief conversation and I definitely got the feeling that you were like, cool, hi, stop talking to me. And then that was it. Probably, probably. <laughs> I'm a, it depends on when you caught me. Um, it's okay. You could say no. Other it was fine. Last, we didn't really. Other, other than this last PAX? Yeah, it was, it was, it was before that. We had a really, really brief conversation. You were talking to somebody way more important than me and then someone introduced us oh! and we did. And we did, we did that like, hi, hi, okay, bye. And then that was it. (laughs) The Twitch symposium, that little panel thing. Yeah. 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 Somebody, somebody shoehorned me into the middle of a conversation you were already having. And I was like, she, she's talking, you don't need to introduce us. And then it was happening. I was just like, okay. And I remember that. I remember that because I was in the middle of one of my like, like tirades or I was talking about something. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I was like, this is what y'all need to do with VODs, all right? You need to have a time lock on the VODs where, you know, because when, yeah. when you go to somebody's <laughs> channel and you're not subbed and there's no VODs there because your VODs are sub only, that's dumb. You're, they should be time locked that after a week, a VOD will unlock for non-subs. What? And I'm like in the middle of this. And I remember somebody to come over and say, this is Adam. I'm like, who's this guy? I'm making a really yeah, right. important I wish, point right now. I'm trying I to wish talk I could about remember. how to monetize VODs effectively <laughs> on Twitch. And you're introducing this man to me. And I, think, I wish I could remember I like, who that was because it's their fault. They they were the one that fault. screwed this up. Because it, it was Pluto. awkward. I felt socially awkward. I was like, hi, <laughs> but about the VODs. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and we, we were both in that position. We were just like, okay, cool. Like, yes, we do similar stuff. I'm going to leave you to this conversation you were obviously in the middle of. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah, yes, I do so. remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad it didn't it didn't sour you on me that you weren't later like oh no this is that guy that interrupted me talking about the vods. Yeah, but, I was uh, talking about the vods, Adam. Yeah. Fuck. How, how are your how are your vods doing? They're doing well. Have gotten, yeah. Have you gotten any of the changes that you wanted from that TwitchCon conversation two years ago? I shall not comment. <laughs> <laughs> I mm -hmm. shall refrain mm -hmm. from commenting on this thing. In particular, yeah. cannot recall. Yeah. It's reasonable. It's, reasonable. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so you got a you got a one shot. You got a one shot coming up. You did character creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How no, was I'm, it? I'm Are you so excited? excited. I am. So you're, um, you're in the you're in the sweet spot. You're in what I consider to be maybe the at least for the beginning of a of a game, especially for one shot. You were in the you were in the best possible emotional space as a gm where you've mm -hmm. made the characters and you're just like percolating mm -hmm. all the ideas but you haven't actually mm -hmm. sat down and been like okay let's try to not make this disappointing so you're just everything is potentially mm -hmm. like the best possible thing it could be i love oh, yeah. being in that space it's the best between character creation yeah. and you actually start playing Ooh, ooh, it's good stuff i'm envious yeah, no. it's i get i get excited uh before every campaign um yeah, yeah that's actually what i was doing right before I came here. Um, I'm in yeah. a D and D fifth edition game in Jesse Cox's channel, and I I get like super hyped before a new campaign. And then people are like, "Don't yeah. you enjoy the other campaigns you're on?" I'm like, "Not as much as the ones I'm about to be on, because that it's that moment of potential. And especially as a GM, you get that like times three thousand, because like mm -hmm. you're just like, oh gosh, like there's so many there's so many things I can do with all these people. And the coolest part about the cast in question is that. Like Pocket and Zeke are already like they have like a backstory, like like an intense interwoven backstory. And mm -hmm. there's and a vampire, yeah. like and now, they have touchstones and relationship maps. You can do so much with that. Right. And now you only have four hours to do every possible thing that you need to do. There's with no it. way it's gonna be four hours. It's Welcome to be one shot town. Yeah. There's just no way we can do anything in four hours. Especially because yeah, this a, group is just like so, off the rails. So crazy. what are your what are your what are your vampire what are your vampire touchstones? Is this going to be like uh, Lost Boys? Is it going to be like little Anne Rice? We're going to have like a like a sexy mm -hmm. powdered wig vampires. Is this going to be like Let the Right mm -hmm. One In? What's what's where are you going? Give me a vampire. Um, you're going for. Well, based off of the kind of crew we have, um, this is going to be kind of like have like Blade inspired a little bit. It's more I about that last weekend i watched that film have we all seen have we all seen this so wait, wait, wait. no i know this is like the third or fourth time so okay. we watched we watched first we watched two movies in a row we watched the craft and then we watched blade so mm -hmm. that's just to let you know where you're headed. max and have you both seen blade have you seen the film blade yeah. yes but not recently yes no yeah that's fine i up. cannot think i cannot think of a single movie that that not to put too fine a point on it, blows its load so early, and then yep. just the rest of the movie is just a downhill slide. You should yep. not have started that film with the Blood Rave. It's the best part of the whole it's movie. The best part of the movie. Yeah, I just and then everything else is just nothing. Screen. It's just because people in my chat were like, "Oh, I've never seen Blade," because I was like, "It's probably one of the greatest comic book movies ever." And I was like, "The opening for that is like the best opening for any movie ever." And and, right. and people were like, "Because I was talking about how." What I, I'm not going to try to spoil anything for anybody, but I was talking about what for me got in the way of Venom, which is like too much exposition. Like you don't need right. to explain, well, how, where did this symbiote come from? How did it attach to this journalist? No, we don't need to know that. And I, I used Blade as a perfect example where I was like, yeah. they explain nothing. These are vampires. This is a, a giant man with a katana and he will now slice these vampires in half. 
Also, he has fangs. He might be a vampire, too. I don't know. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. That it's movie true. did true. it right. They don't waste their time being like, well, Blade was actually born by a woman who was mortal, but no, was you need, by a you need, they just you need 25, flashbacks. You need 25 minutes, 25 minutes of voiceovers, and yeah, it's a whole thing. But no, Blade, yeah, Blade, for all of its corniness, and it's like trying to really hard to be the Matrix, um, but with vampires, and like that that whole kind of like, it's part of a very corny subset of films. It definitely is the the proto-Marvel movie. Um, I think that mm -hmm. it, you can feel some of its influence in like the more modern uh, Marvel stuff. But yeah, it's so good at the beginning. And then it's just like, it said its piece. And you're like, okay, what else you got? And they're like, um, vampires? Yeah, because the beginning sword? is the like, best part. Don't... That's like, yeah. yeah. This, the expectation yeah. was set too high with that. You can't do better than Blood Rave. It's so good. And that song, yeah. that song... That song and bangs like it is such a good head. song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The and then like zombie, that, that, that like really. Thing? No, Rob Zombie is. You're thinking of the the uh, rave Me? scene in the Matrix where, uh, yeah, he goes and he meets Trinity. Yeah, yeah which is his, the one in the. I gotta look it up now because I know that's a Rob Zombie song, and I think that's Dragula. I think. Hey. Yeah. 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 And then you have like that also, creepy guy that's kind of an asshole, and then like his slow realization oh. is like, "Oh my god, is this blood? Oh my god, this yeah. is blood!" No, but it's that, so great. That actor is like a relatively like he went on to be in other more serious things after Blade. That dude, and he's wearing a back a backwards Kangol yeah, hat, he and looks he like, like an he goes in. I think I think the actress that is the vampire in that scene is I want to say Tracy Lords, who's like an adult movie actress, and they made a big deal of her being in the movie. And yeah, she she like lures him into the into the blood rave, and then that douchebag yeah. gets, gets killed. And yeah, yeah. So I'm deep in the '90s techno now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I actually made a song that was very like when I was younger and I was messing around with Fruity Loops. I made a song that was just inspired pretty much by that song. It was just enough. Like, <laughs> It's the same kind of like repetitive, you know, do, do, do not the well, exact same one. There, there are several, there That's are several films. Because I remembered yeah. it there, as soon as you did the do, 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 yeah, do, 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 Yeah, it's a remix. It's a New Order remix. So there's several movies, Blade included, from the 90s, like Blade and the Matrix, uh, Hackers, that like kind of launched the the like career or made made a big deal out of the career of some some like techno artists and the spawn soundtrack for example mm -hmm. is one where a bunch of people on it were paired up with other more famous bands and then got big after that uh there's yeah there's a whole subset of like weird 90s soundtrack techno films that are like cool all right this this is what the 90 this is what we thought that the 90s sounded like when we think about how cool it would have been to have a trench coat and four katanas and mirrored sunglasses <laughs> Yeah. It's what Shadowrun sounds like. Let's like be real. Weaponized yeah. edge. Yeah, Loved super it. edgy katanas, trench coats, yeah. fangs. Yeah, um, like you know the the they're the very first X Men movie where they're like, you know what? We can't have these people dressing up in in yellow and blue spandex. We're gonna mock that during the movie. Instead, we're gonna put them in head to toe pleather. That's yeah. just so much better. And I'm sitting here like. The, ye the yellow spandex women better, fam. I don't know what y'all were thinking with this one. Because when you go back and watch, look at their costumes, they're just bad. Like They're trying so hard to be cool. The original X-Men movie. Oh, they're like in yeah. head-to-toe leather. It's not great. It's not a great look. It does not mm. look comfortable or tactical or there's just... It's... What about Professor Xavier? Is he also... <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, with a chrome, a chrome floating uh, you know, wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, skin type, bodysuit, latex. It was a weird movie. Strange times, the nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fashion, fashion, the nineties. Cool guy fashion uh, is it's a it's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that we could share this moment talking about Blade because if you haven't seen it, chat, go watch Blade. It's a whole thing. It's a whole. It is a whole thing. thing. It holds um, up. But also the craft, which I had not, I hadn't seen up. the craft since the nineties, and it's yeah. It's really weird. Speaking of, of White Wolf, it, the craft feels like uh, a, like a bunch of teenage girls made up their first like mage game. And it's it's perfect. It's corny mm -hmm. and terrible and perfect. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's a whole it's a whole ass thing. Um, but yeah, 90s throwback black leather bodysuit karate movies. Cool. 
I'm looking forward to your vampire one shot now. Now I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, I have edgy vampires. It's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever seen the TV show uh, Kindred? Have you seen that show? No, I've heard of it though. It's it's a, a limited run. It was on for like five or six episodes in the '90s. It's an official White Wolf Vampire the Masquerade TV yeah, show. I've seen it on Amazon. Uh, Felt like a box. It's set really it. bad, and they canceled it because the guy, the main actor, uh, died in a motorcycle accident. Ooh. And uh, it was yeah, they were there was a tons of, there were tons of scenes where the vampires were just walking around during the day. Uh, a lot of that kind of edge lordy like like vampires in pleather thing. And I think it was produced by like Shannon Doherty's dad or something. No, Aaron Tori Spelling's dad. Aaron Spelling. It's fucking terrible. So bad. But my one a, shot is like gonna be time. terrible. My one shot's gonna be great because my when vampires are cool. It's next Monday. I don't know why I'm talking like that. It's gonna be great. Can you GM like that in that voice, please? Yes, we'll have an MPC who talks like that. It'll be great. Cool, um, Max. I know you. You got you got yours. Did anybody else get your Farvero pins? I did. I got, got my crust. Yeah. House crust. It was a nice. very nice surprise. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Yes. I'm so excited. Yeah. I like opened it and it said like Sir Pens on the package and I was just like, they know where <laughs> to send me mail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is next level that they, they know where to send me mail. Great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. If I see anybody at TwitchCon wearing the House Cygnus pin, you're getting retired. Just I'm telling you right away. Just look <laughs> out. Look out. Don't do it. <laughs> Only I'm just going to be like... Come here, here's uh, Oh God! What was her name? Dana from Kill Bill. God, what is the woman's name? Chat, help me. Which you, you gotta have to be more specific. There's many women Black in that Bamba. movie. Beatrice Uma Kiddo? Thurman. No, 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 no. That's all. No. no, no, no. Uh, the one who carries, she has the snakes. She brings the snakes into the trailer. Daryl Hannah. I was saying Dana Daryl oh, Hannah or something. Oh. Daryl Hannah. Yes. Oh, Daryl Hannah is so great. That's yeah. going to be me. I'm just going to have a briefcase of snakes. So perfect. Watch out. Good. Oh, man. Daryl Driver. That's her name. Yeah. Man, I need to rewatch that yeah. movie. Yeah. The first one is so good, and the second one is not as good. <laughs> but that first one, the first Kill Bill movie, I remember just being blown okay. away. I saw it in the theater a couple of times. Yeah, it's still good, yeah. but by comparison, and I think going back to what we were talking about before, Max, I think the reason is that I like samurai movies and kung fu movies a lot more than westerns, and the second one's hella a western. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Totally that's is. fair. They have a Texas that's funeral. Fair. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the reason I don't like it uh, as, as much. Yeah. Man, I'm thinking about Kill Bill. Dope. The movie's great. I haven't mm-hmm. seen that in a really long time. I've seen I all the last time I saw it was they played times. it in a theater. They did a, a like a two shot of them back to back. But that was years ago. Yeah. And my dad mm-hmm. was a big film buff and he used to work in, in films. So. I was one of those kids that grew up watching Tarantino movies. It's just not appropriate for kids, but <laughs> yeah. I've seen them all. Like I grew up watching like <laughs> Reservoir Dogs and Jackie Brown and stuff. And I remember Reservoir Dogs like being a little traumatized by the whole like the the, the whistling and the, the when he cuts off Homeboy's ear. But um, mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. I was really young when I watched that. But I was also just like, oh, this movie is so <laughs> good. But also, oh my god, he's cutting through his cartilage and it's taking him so long. Isn't isn't to to bring it back around to the sci-fi thing? Isn't Tarantino making a Star Trek movie now? I isn't heard that happening. Rumor. Yeah, is that that seems yes. Like that's supposedly official, that's a thing. It, okay, so I feel like this is I'm a weird question up. to ask because I feel like I know the answer because it's a Tarantino movie. But is it like a dark spin on Star Trek? Like a more real? Yeah, rated um, R, rated R Star Trek movie. He pitched wow. it, and apparently, it's like it's it's. This is in the like pre-announced, but like, yeah, wow, that would be so I'd watch weird. It. I'd watch. I it. will too. Well, like in like a with second, Django. We've kind of mm. seen that he can do some like lighthearted, more like like wholesome stuff. So there might be those moments in it, because Django, in my opinion, had had a good amount of that that like that cuteness factor in it, where you're like, what? <laughs> He's capable of this level of, of, of like, you know, and comedy. Did we, like with the did KKK see, in the middle of the night, like, you know, can't see because of their hoods. I was like, I've ne- I didn't realize Tarantino's fucking hilarious. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I understand what you're saying. I think that's true. That there are parts of it that are funny. The KKK. <laughs> <laughs> Those idiots. Yeah, I mean, that's... I, so the thing is, it'll be it'll be the Star Trek movie will be Doctor uh, Do, it'll be Spock and McCoy and Scotty and Kirk and they'll be trapped in a cabin in the hills, and then it'll be they'll be waiting for the Enterprise to come pick them up. But there's an ion storm, and then one of them has betrayed the other ones, and then and there, it'll be a lot of blood, and then a lot of like really weird language that doesn't fit into Star Trek. But I I love I honestly love when that stuff happens. I love when they take a director and they're like, yeah, do it, do this thing, like take take the you know, take the beloved, take the beloved thing and run with it. And sometimes it goes good and sometimes it doesn't, but it's cool seeing people take a risk and people that own IPs and not just be like, cool, let's just get the same dumb guys to do these movies over and over. Yeah, because like it. it's not going to ruin the franchise. You can have a shitty movie and still have like another movie after that. That's good. Yeah. Like when they first announced Taika Waititi was directing Ragnarok, I was like, I know this guy from what we do in the shadows. Like, that, I mean, that, I love that movie. If you haven't seen it, you should mm -hmm. totally watch yeah, it. It's, it's a, a mockumentary movie. and it's fucking great. But I was like, he's going to direct Thor. And does he, did he make it more comedic? Yes. But I mean, I think he did a pretty great job with it. So it was a different take on Thor than we've seen before. Mm -hmm. Thor mm -hmm. actually had flavor instead of being a generic shitty superhero movie. Like it, this is the first time it had like really good flavor. Like it was a Thor yeah. movie. It was different than all it's the other It's appropriate too, because it's, these are like side story, side stories that are concerned with the specific superhero. It should be like different and focused on them rather than just being like kind of a part of the ensemble of like the Avengers and being like, I'm Thor. Yeah. <laughs> you introduce, you introduce the character in the blandest way that you need to, to get the point across. And then you let other people do weird, funny things. And that's very much in the spirit of comics, right? Like, somebody's Wolverine is going to be different from the next person's Wolverine and so on and so forth. And you kind of got to let that happen. Um, and occasionally you get a movie or whatever that people are going to be like, well, this isn't my star Wars. I'm pissed about this. And it's like, well, fucking take a seat. There'll be 10,000 more of them before you die. You'll get rebooted a hundred times. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I'm warmed up. You guys want to play a role playing game? Yeah. Rest in peace, Chaplain Valencio. Sure. Blown, rest in pieces, blown to bits. Uh, I love that we have a shot of him. Yeah, we have a shot of him right here in the moment before he was exploded in his shuttle. He's just, he's sitting there in the passenger seat. He's ready to go. Rest in peace, buddy. <laughs> um, so for, for folks who, for folks who didn't know, um, yeah, Mark is uh, currently in Japan, uh, not playing role-playing games. So I guess too bad for him. Um, Anne? Did you yes. finish your leveling up? Are you level? So up? I have, I don't know if it's bad news or just news. <laughs> I don't remember uh, ever doing this. So okay, I'm wondering. That's news. It's okay. Yeah. So I'm wondering if I, I don't remember if I've cho chosen like skill points and stuff before. I remember right, changing. So this went, like, this went, this AP, went from, this went from, I'm not sure that I am ready to level up now to, I don't think I've ever leveled up. <laughs> which is fine remember. that's okay Dude, that's you, the problem you got a lot of we remember. got a lot of xp back taxes to pay um yeah. yeah i mean you you did you did get your you got your xp you got your level up from mm -hmm. um from your hit points what level are you now three four you're level four now okay yeah oh four so okay. i did that so you were to roll our hp yeah we got to do hp we got to do Right, because the math on the HP was all like fucked up last time. Okay, all right. So, what do you roll? Let's do. Let's do the thing that's easy first. Let's do your uh, your HP. Okay. So you roll as a psychic D force for HP. Is that correct? Is that what you've rolled so far? Or is it D sixes? I don't know where that is on here. Um, rolling. It is. No, it's a D six. A D six for D6, psychic. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you're gonna roll a D six. Uh, once for every level that you have. So you're going to roll four, four D6. And each D6 is, you have a constitution penalty of one, right? Um, correct. Okay, so each D6 is minus one. So you're going to roll four D6 minus four. Okay, but question, don't I use my skill points to increase my skills? Uh, Never mind. You, my constitution is five. It would cost me a lot of points in order to do that. Yeah, it would take Never you mind. a long time to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I just looked at it and it's five. So we're just gonna do that. Okay. Cool. 
Uh, D six minus one. Uh, yeah, but you're doing four of them. What's your current hit points? Six. Okay, current HP is six. So you can't do worse than that. And in fact, I think you will go up by at least one. Uh, let me let me take a look uh, before you start rolling. Um, and then you roll your uh, yeah, 46 in each die. Yeah, like let's do them one die at a time because the die can't okay. be lower than uh, lower than one. Okay, so uh, yeah, one you can't minus roll, one. You can't roll a zero on this. Yeah, give me give me a second. I Great. just want to make a sure. zero. <laughs> okay, good. So there you go. Um, that's a good one. That's a good die. You started fantastically. I quit. Um, uh, Nomi dies horribly in an explosion. Well, I mean, we already established that we already established that you won the game, so you can you can go home. Um, that's fine. Great. Good I'm start. Home. Okay. All right. So uh, you roll a number of six sided dice. You get to your new level. A negative modifier can never lower a die's result below one if the total is greater than your current hit points. You take that. Okay. Yes. So uh, that that is that counts. That counts as a you have a one so far. Great. Good. All right. Do that so three strong. more times. I don't want to. Four. Am, okay, so five. Okay. I'm scared. Okay. All right, five. Two more times. <laughs> Good. Great. Six. Good. Just blow it out of the water on this one. One more. Seven. And. <laughs> All right. You have seven hit points now. You gained one hit point. Congratulations. I hate tabletop <laughs> RPGs so much. Oh, come on. It's fine. <laughs> Damn it. Why? Why? When you're like, oh, I want to, I want to play a psychic Ooh. assassin, and you roll, and you're like, okay, Who's four decks, zeros, and a one. Constitution Who does that. Your job is just to not get hit by things. Okay, all right. So your base attack bonus is half your Seven. level rounded down. So your base attack bonus goes up now uh, by one. Attack okay. bonus. I um, it says zero. Yeah, let me, Shouldn't it be yes, two then? It'll, it'll, it'll go up now. Um, let me see. Yeah, attack bonus is two. Okay. It's there. You got it. Because uh, it goes up when you level. Um, okay. All right. Making Heroa proud. Uh, and now your saving throws will have automatically updated. And to get to level five, you need uh, 18 experience. So that's cool. Um, and then skill points. So if you're a psychic, you have to spend at least one point on improving your psychic skills or gaining new techniques. Um, skills that are gained and moved immediately, you just they just happen. Uh, so you don't have to like train or whatever. Um, so do you want to increase your? Let's see, how many do you get? You are my HP. Yes, I do. <laughs> Psych no, <laughs> you, I'm at, you gotta improve your psychic stuff. This is where stuff is good. Your your telepathy can get better. Um, Great, or your precognition. So I can so let me just, my precognition, so I can see when I'm going to die. Right, you're about I to die. lose all your hit points. Yeah, it's <laughs> gonna be the thing that I'm ready to tell you that. Yes, that's definitely. useful. Right? <laughs> okay, uh, let's run level one. Let's see, so skill points you're gonna get. Okay, so your minimum character level is okay. So you can you can raise your skills can can go up to uh, up to level three uh, now uh, if you want to continue uh, advancing them. And then let me see how many you get uh, per level. You get a bonus point for a non combat, non psychic. Oh, that's sorry, that's an expert. Here we go. Okay, what is your uh, what's your wisdom or uh constitution modifier which is the i mean obviously it's your wisdom what's your wisdom modifier zero. zero okay all right so your current effort is one plus zero for the stat and then whatever your highest um whatever your highest psychic ability is going to be okay uh, i'm just trying to figure out how many skill points you get per level uh, when you level up so i can't find that does a pc here. gains three skill points Ah, there you they go. can spend okay. on improving their skills or save to spend later, which is what I have okay. done. So. Okay, so you, you have you've gained three, one of which has to be spent on improving uh, your uh, one of your psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, which uh, what do you want to improve? Because your next the next level of telepathy 
You have level yeah, two I'm right looking now, for right? That on here. Uh, both of my it says level one. Transmit thought level one, telepathic contact level one. Oh yeah, that's Oracle right. Is level yeah. zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So at level two, you'll be able to read current thoughts. So like actually like what they are thinking. Uh, this is where it starts to get to the to that stuff. So they get a mental save, but yeah. if they fail, you can like actually read their mind, uh, and that's cool. that's level two. And level one of Oracle is I can see a day into the future rather than one minute into the future, which is what I currently have. Okay. Yeah, and then you also, when you level, when you gain another level, you get another ability. So you can get um, suppressed mm. cognition, far thought. Uh, okay. So far thought is telepathic contact, and then you have a hundred kilometer range of psychic uh, communication with the, that person. Or suppressed cognition, which sounds pretty cool. You can make the target of a telepathic contact simply not think about a thing, whether it's the presence of the telepath, yes. the possibility of committing violence, the absence of important Oops. documentation. Um, this is the like, whatever this thing is, you they cannot think about it. Uh, and, and this is a way for you to be like like the, the shadow. You basically become like invisible, right? Um, awesome. Yeah, you so are, you're just not in the you room. Talk about like, me mind fucking people, but you are. This is yeah. This is when this is when you get the ability to do so. Okay, yeah. cool. So I will take yeah. The suppressed cognition sounds like my jam. So okay, all right. Um, so yeah, Keep you get both. Thought, right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And this you get is additional new, stuff. No. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna get your uh, telepathy will go up to two. So that means your effort becomes uh, three now. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, this is the cool. So this this could come in handy like now. Um, <laughs> so reading current thoughts can't pick up memories or non-obvious connections, but you can know exactly what they're thinking if they fail to save. Uh, that's your that's your new psychic ability. And then of the two, you want to choose the um, uh, the other one, right? The um, suppress cognition. Yes. Cool. All right. So yeah, maybe the tension of the current situation has has boosted you into like, okay, I need to be able to do this. Yeah. So yeah. yes, you're fragile as hell, but you are getting to the place where you can start like mutilating people's brains uh, nice. with with your psychic powers. You can start doing some intense shit. Um, okay. Great. Cool. Uh, and then if you have any skill points remaining, uh, you can use them to advance your. Um, so is that just one skill point? Yeah, I'm gonna look. Uh, you're currently at uh, you're currently level one for the psych for your psychic ability. Uh, it will cost you new skill level is two. Uh, that'll cost you uh, all three uh, of your points. Okay. Uh, to do that, unless you have any leftovers from from before. I don't know because I don't know if I, okay. I don't. So think what we'll we do? Leveled up anything in the past? Yeah, what we'll do right now is we'll uh, we'll just do that, um, and then I'll go back and we'll redo. I'll, I'll look at your character sheet. And I'll just check all the math, and we'll make sure you have all the skills that you that you need. Like I'll check how much stuff uh, you currently have, and I'll I'll adjust Great. for that. So if if you're missing anything, I'll let you know, and you can let me make a note. Okay. Check check Nomi math. Awesome. Oh, I'm so excited to watch you melt people's brains. Um, yeah. So this is yeah. This is this is where things start to get like intense for psychics around this level, and then now you're you're on your path to like physically harming people with psychic energy, um, editing their memories, so changing what they think happened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you. Start I don't know how scary. to. I, I don't know how to edit my uncommitted effort on here. It won't let me type in this thing. I can change my um, scene and day, but I can't change my uncommitted effort. Oh, I guess oh, I don't know. Oh, it'll it'll it's automatically calculating it for you. Precognition, telepathy. Okay, so I oh wait, yeah, telepathy. There we go. There you okay, go. So there's a you box got it. above it with yeah, with like click arrows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you leveled up, you're you're ready to go. Nice. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, so <clears throat> let's do let's do goals so we can keep breaking in that 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 good good stuff. Um, Kiran, you are like I know where we know where Booker and Nomi are. We know what they're up to. What, where's where's the where's the Amira right now? Catch me up on on what's going on uh, with your character and what you want to do. Let's talk about your goals. So you met with you met with the Trillion dude before. 
Um, I owe you by the end of today. I owe you a new a new servant, right? You don't have one yet. No, I don't. Sorry, hench person. <laughs> yeah, hench okay. person. Okay, so I'll make a note of that. So sometime, sometime during April fifth, you get a new a new hench. That person. was like the weirdest ability I took, but also kind of like the funnest. It's hench great. Keeper. It's like one of my main. Yeah. Things, yeah. Imagine you just like go somewhere and then like within a day someone is like, I've heard about you. You're great. I'm here to help. Yeah. Incompetently, but for now. Uh okay. Yeah. So uh okay. So what do you want? What do you want your goal to be for, for this session? Um I want my goal to be to <laughs> get out of this church situation unscathed. Isn't that where we ended? It's been a while. We well, they Booker, closed the Booker church, and, months, right? Yeah, and you you were with you were with them, right? Yeah. So no, we were separate. The... Me and Nomi were separate from Booker because Booker got accosted by that. That's right. By That's the local right. Yeah, okay. I was attempting to be a. Uh... I couldn't. Yeah, I can remember because Booker. Yeah, Booker tried to fight those dudes or whatever, and then ran separated. off. And okay, so Booker is in. Booker is out in the the like neighborhood, um, and then. Okay, that's right. And the two of you yeah. are in the in the church. Yeah, and they okay. closed the doors on us, and that's where it ended. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which okay. is kind of scary. Why are they yeah. closing those doors? Because it's church time. You can't let strangers into the church. It's too late. Um, okay, so good. So you're gonna you're gonna be in there doing that thing. Um so well, yeah, what do you want your what do you want your goal to be? How do you want to get out of this situation, or what do you want to get out of it? I guess is is more important. Um, probably, I probably want to I probably want to put together the pieces and see if this, because obviously this is a offshoot of the actual church, because there's been graffiti everywhere. Well, it's some and it's some kind of yeah, like this this planet is is covered in in like weird religious offshoots. That's kind of Berkman's whole jam, right? Is they're like Yeah. We wanna we wanna worship the way yeah. we wanna worship in these slightly different ways than everybody else. Um Yeah. And, and you're, my in, player, you're in one of the parish so you're in rather, one of the parish communes I, now. Yeah. Yeah. So I as a player probably have a pretty decent idea from some of the graffiti which offshoot that is, but my character probably doesn't. So um I'm I kind of want to put together like whether whether these people are the ones that are responsible for the terrorist attacks that have been happening on the planet, whether it's right. This and the reason commune, the reason that you all reason you all came down here was to meet with uh, Talat Lao, right? Yes. Um, so that because this is this is that person's uh, this is the the pastor's. Yeah, thing. he's supposed to be coming okay. to dinner, right? Yeah, that was, was the plan. Yeah, he was invited yeah. Yeah, to the potential uh, murder dinner that will happen. <laughs> murder dinner. Murder dinner, yeah. Like okay. dinner thing. Right. You know, murder. Okay. Cool. I'm feeling it. All right, so what do you mm -hmm. want your what do you want your role? What do you want your your goal to be for today? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Bronze. I want to know the goal. Okay. I want to know how you're going to do it. enough thinking, cost, it would have been me. So I had to ask. I love Max. Max, I love, God bless you, Max, that you're like, if there's a pause and you're like, wait, no one's talking. Did I miss something? Is it me? Did I? I'm sorry. Like this, you're very sweet, Max. I just want to pass Listen, it's two things. It's one, <laughs> self consciousness. Two, no, I, I, keep the dead air off the show. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I understand. Right. It's 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 great. I like. No, no it. offense. I'm not. It's just it, that's just the the stuff that kicks in when it's too quiet. All right. Totally. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Make contact with Talat Lau, and ascertain his uh, motivations behind uh, acquiring the invitation to dinner. Because if I remember correctly, didn't the other lady have to pull some strings to get him invited? Like he was really uh, she invited him per yes the the elder uh the elder invited him personally yeah right uh, okay. elder so yes that shall be my goal okay uh you can you can make it broader than that it doesn't have to be that specific so you could just say like ascertains uh Lau's motivation like figure him out yeah right sure there'll be some roles that. there and okay okay cool all right well also in the also in the church uh 
is uh, is Nomi. Um, Nomi, what do you wanna what do you wanna do in this 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 episode today? Um, I want to get out of the church alive. Right. Yeah. Like just yourself, or you want to get you and the Amira out, or oh, Prob- um... <laughs> I was gonna say. If I could interject, Dan, <laughs> probably just her. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. I don't know what happened. There was a there was a struggle, and one of those church weirdos shot the Amira in the back, and then I killed them. Also, no one could say otherwise. Yes, I want my goal to be that we both get out alive. <laughs> Is that actually your goal, or do you just want to get out alive? Um. Yeah, I think um uh, yes. Nomi cares enough about her crew not dying. Okay. So that if she can get both of us out, then yeah. Don't ask right. me my goal. Stall for time. I gotta grab my coffee from the door. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm just gonna write real slow here. Get myself and the Amira out of this situation. Okay. Cool. Oh. Well, well Max's Excellent. empty chair. What do you want to do today? Um yeah, I mean there's no it's cool because there's no reason there's no reason for Nomi to assume that this is like a murder trap or whatever, but uh it's good that you're kind of like you're ready and uh and I'm interested yeah. to see how you're is it a murder goes. trap? I don't we don't know yet, right? All you we know, know yeah. is that you you went in. But you said that they closed the church doors for church activities, and now you're saying maybe it's a murder trap, and I'm having trust issues. He said that he said there's no That's reason good. for us to think that it is a murder trap, which is you true should, because like, should, they listen. haven't like threatened us. It's just that it's you an should, uncomfortable yeah. situation. Yeah. So you should always trust that the things I tell you are real and true, but you should not trust why I'm telling you them is Mm-mm. the thing you should be afraid for your life probably most of the time um yeah i mean that ominous the ominous door shutting was for the audience's sake right it was just like minor key change doors shut but i mean you can't hear your own soundtrack so it's it's fine um though there's a game where that's not the case i can't remember what it is there's a perk you can take where your character always hears the soundtrack of their own life and you can use it to figure out when things are going to go wrong or like how to interact with people. So when you meet someone and the soundtrack changes, then you're like, oh, this oh, yeah. person's, they're bad. I don't like them. What game was that? Man, RPG nerds, get at me. What game is that? I can't remember. I think it's probably GURPS. All right, Max. Okay. Hello. Um, um, what do you want your <clears throat> name to be? <clears throat> probably make sure that the Mira and Nomi, um, Return safely from the the church. Okay. All right. Well, that would be his his number one. Okay. Run, know me. Get out safe. Yeah, because you are outside of the the closed church. Yeah. Okay. Word. Word. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> maybe we begin. Excuse me. Uh, maybe we begin with uh, with Booker then, uh, who <laughs> was trying to pretend that he was a he was a pleb and got caught, and then what you you fled? I think is the last thing that, that you did. Let's look at let's look at the last. Yeah, I ran out the door. From, I ran out the door, and then I believe Booker. my plan was to like duck into an alley or something like that, and just wait till the heat kind of died down. But I don't know if we got to that point. I, you, I don't know if they the were last still thing you did. Shit. The last thing you did was a punch roll. Uh, which was like hitting the dude and then, and then yeah, getting, getting away. <clears throat> yeah. So let me give you another quick description of the area that you're in. So you are, uh, we're on Berkman, which is a, a Mesa covered kind of desert. Like imagine if we filmed exterior scenes here, we would film them, uh, in like Arizona, right out in the Badlands. Um, and you are inside, uh, the uh, the city of New Antioch, which is a city that is predominantly, like many of Berkman cities, uh, it's like a chasm city. So there's a surface mesa with some structures growing on top of it, big sort of like gray and, and blue buildings sticking up uh, and uh, like solar farms, stuff like that. And then uh, there's a chasm and along either side of the chasm wall are uh, caverns and um, 
sort of uh, struts that jut out and cross it, bridges, uh, vehicles that move, hover vehicles that move up and down these various layers of the interior of the, the chasm of New Antioch. Uh, you are pretty deep down uh, in the in the layers of, of New Antioch among uh, one of uh, these these sort of subsections. So there's a an entrance into a um, it's like a there's a word that I'm trying to think of where they usually use to describe like religious compounds. That's the one. You're in a compound inside. So it's like a series of interconnected large, like big caves. They probably have their own dark farms, uh, their own like aqua centers. And uh, one of these uh, one of these is the uh, the one that you are currently in, which is controlled by or run by uh, essentially Talat Lao, who is a uh, pastor uh, and a community leader inside this uh this commune this little this little pastoral commune um so everyone that lives here is um ostensibly of the same religion right they're they're uh, of the same subsect though you don't none of you have have like figured out what that might mean or what their personal precepts might be but you are inside effectively like a walled community uh that belongs to uh to this this religion and Talat Lao is their is their pastor. Now Lao may not be the official like leader, right? They might have a mayor or a governor or something. Um, and all of the various community heads are ostensibly led by and given orders by uh, Brigham Brigham Aflion, the uh, the mayor of New Antioch. But things are not always so clear. So Talat Lao, you know, is a a friend or or contact of the Reverend Elder Miguel Sinclair, who's the high church priest in charge of New Antioch. She's the sort of like bishop or whatever, or archbishop of New Antioch. Um, so Lau and her have a relationship of some kind, and you came down here to further, uh, further understand that. So we see this this compound. There are uh, adults. There are children. Uh, it is a it is a community. There are homes and stores, and it all has a slightly ramshackle uh, appearance not run down right not like grimy but if uh if any of the the characters have ever been on like an asteroid uh facility like a moon base anything like that anything that's it feels like you're not connected to the outside world because you're in a series of caves so there is a slight claustrophobia to it there is that sort of like human smell in the air the struggling of the of the air recyclers uh to keep uh to keep operating things and uh and the the group of you are down here and booker you are uh in in enemy territory as far as you're concerned your heart is pounding you you took a swing at this dude and and fled and we we fade in on on you where where are you right now like where have you you've you've gotten away for a moment you've got just a moment to do something where where are you have you like run into an alley do you bust into like a shop are you in someone's house where do we see booker we're in first person view from Booker. His heart's okay. kind of like you said, it's blinking, it's, it's blurry vision, and then the camera just goes whoosh, up top, it pauses, goes, that's me down there. I bet you're wondering how I got here. And that's where mm -hmm. we start. <clears throat> yeah. Then right. we fast then we forward to old man Booker. I was say, yeah. More old man Booker. <laughs> we flash back and we see a 12 year old, and it's 12 year old Booker Greaves, and he's in his. Junior Police Academy, and no, we don't have time for that. So, I mean, Junior Police so you Academy. Need, you need to warn me if you're going to do that horse shit. So, yeah, um, uh, you have you like just ducked into an alley, or are or do we see you in like mid flea? Like, are you looking for somewhere to uh, to hide? Yeah, I think we left off mid flea less before. My intention okay. is to yeah. find an alley. That's what it was before. So, j basically, just okay. break line of sight, uh, and hopefully, if there's a crowd there, I think you said there was a crowd before when we last left off. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a crowd in the sense that everybody is sort of crammed into this place, but it's not uh, it's not like it's not like it was on. And maybe you're, you maybe you have a little bit of like flashback to uh, to Hong Lu. It's not as crowded or or dystopic as as that. This is much more sort of frontiersy. Um, and yeah, there are people. So you you see, we see a, a woman with like a, a baby uh, in her arms, like watch you like run, <laughs> watch you run by. Um, and you bust out into the kind of main thoroughfare and you're looking around. And yeah, you're you're like drawing attention, but not no one's shouting. There's no alarm going off. And you can hear behind you the kind of rustling of, of people like pushing forward these these guys to, to chase you down. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Yeah, like I said, push past 
them down like whatever the walkway um mm -hmm. and try to break line of sight by either ducking into a building or a alley whichever is first okay uh let's have you make a roll then let's have you make a um a sneak roll if you're gonna try to try to hide um or yeah go ahead and go ahead and do that sounds good do with your do with your dexterity Yeah. Ooh, okay, I now this is an opposed roll, so I might do worse. There's two of them. So the first one's gonna try to help the second one. So if this if I get a seven or better on this one, I get a plus one on my next one. All right. Okay, it's a tie. What do we do with ties? I don't know. Max wins. I think we just in the event of a tie. Oh. Let me check. It okay. says that right in the book. It says right here, yeah, Max wins. Right there. That's yeah. so weird. Uh sorry, Anne. Uh Max is now the winner of Far Verona. Sorry to right. say that. I think you, yeah, you win. Um, so it's close. It's narrow, right? Like, cause you didn't do a great job here or anything. Um, you duck into a, you duck into an alley, duck behind like an air recycler unit. It's humming away. And you see the two of them uh, come out into the, the opening of the alley and they look around. Uh, one of these, these dudes are just kind of like laborers. Um, one of these dudes has a, a gun, just a small one. It's not like a big, he's got it mostly hidden in his hand. They're looking around. They look down the alley. We see them look past where you are and then continue down the, uh, down the street uh, away from you. So you've evaded capture for now, but uh, they know that you're, they're going to keep looking for you. Uh, what are you going to do, Booker? Um, the initial plan was to have comms con constantly going. So unless Ymira and Nomi have disabled that, I think he's going to stay in his hiding spot and try to tap in and listen to the scenario that's happening. Okay. Because I think he'd right. still be in range, obviously. He's like still in the immediate area just outside the building unless they have some sort of jamming device or whatever. I don't know. I just gave him an idea. Why do I do that? God. Why did you do that? Because I was like, that makes sense. And then you're like, unless they have a jamming device, I'm like, hmm, maybe they would. No, they don't. No, they wouldn't. They're Make stupid, a, far, no, you they're know what? stupid dumb <laughs> church it, people. No offense to people. Oh, that was dumb. That was... <laughs> Bad move, Max. Bad move. <laughs> Make a... Uh... In the context of the world that we're in, okay? <laughs> Make, a, uh... Make a luck roll. Anne is right to distance herself from that statement, because that was <laughs> inflammatory. Between, between this... No, JP between the this, service, his channel. Between this, and your, your, between this and your accidental salute yesterday, man, you're just... It's two for two, Max. <laughs> Wait, what did you make do? It, you don't know what I mean. Nothing. Don't, don't worry. Don't, don't worry know. about it. Don't worry not about it. With, not sure. Let me just Max. The views of Max Gonzalez playing Booker agrees does not reflect the views of role play necessarily. Roll the also roll the, the views of Max Gonzalez did not reflect what he said. Okay, <laughs> he's talking about the yeah. ignorant people on the planet who just happen to be a part of a crazy church. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Nailed it. <laughs> not, not that all churches are crazy. <laughs> Just give, roll the roll. Come on. So, yeah, give him a shovel. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to roll? Make a luck save. Okay. I need that in real life, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. fuck. Okay. All right. That's about right. So you turn on you turn on your comms, and yeah, we see on the on the HUD the little hologram shows like connection lost. And uh, there's maybe a moment of, of your a reaction shot on your face. And then we cut to interior, uh, considerable sized, but still a kind of homey uh, church. So it is, as I think you're probably all imagining, the, the main interior room of a, of a church. I don't know the names of parts of churches, but it's the big hall. And there are pews on either side uh, leading up. Um, nothing in here is made of wood. It's all uh, like plastic the benches are plastic or metal um because there's not a lot of um like vegetation to make wooden stuff out of um and yeah and so these they lead there's maybe a dozen rows on either side a dozen uh, pews on either side and up at the end there is a um there's a pulpit um but it doesn't look like church is like in session and when you walk in uh there are people there's maybe you know, 30 people in here and they're all talking and it's a mix of, uh, of, of people of various genders and ages. And they're just, they're just like chatting. And it, it, it seems like you've kind of walked into the, the like pre 
sermon uh, event. And uh, as strangers, uh, the, uh, the, the collected mass all kind of like, some subtly, others less so, uh, turn their eyes or their head or their whole body to, uh, to look at you uh, as you come in. So you're being uh, you're being escorted, yeah. It was like a oh we we thought mm-hmm. you you know we we might want to be here. Okay, all right. Um, so they uh, the the people that are escorting you take you to uh, to the where the pulpit is and then turn you left to a door. And this actually can can you both make a notice roll uh, with. Uh, Wisdom or intelligence, depending on if you're reading the crowd more than the space. If you're looking at the if you're looking at the room, uh, then it's it's intelligence, and if it's the people, it's wisdom. Yeah, make those notice rolls, and we'll see. Okay, all right. So uh, the Amira. Uh, you can't get a read on these folk. They, they they've got this kind of blank look uh, on their on their face, and mm-hmm. there's just a lot of like eyeballing the stranger. You can't read much more than that. Uh, know me. Uh, there's there's two kinds of people in here. There's people who are here to like check out the pastor, and then there's like a different sort. Uh, mostly men folk uh, who are wearing like heavier coats. Uh, you get the impression that these people are the kinds of people who, if a fight broke out, they would know what to do. There is a, a, a stance to them, a solidity to the way they, they're moving. Their eyes are kind of darting around like they're, they're ready. So there's like a half dozen or so kind of mixed into the crowd uh, of people who they give you the vibe that they're, they're not just here for the, for the sermon. Okay. Um, and so you get walked up to this the side door, and this this door is set into the the rock of the of the the, the sort of cavern wall, and uh, one of your escorts knocks on the door, um, and there is a uh, there's a pause, and the um, I think the door probably you notice there's a, a whirring sound. You look at there's a little security camera above the door, and it refocuses. There's a, another minute. And then the door clicks and you hear the sound, both of you hear the sound of multiple locks disengaging. Um, and before you go in, uh, one of your, uh, one of your escorts says, uh, hold on. And the door opens and somebody steps out. And this is one of those guys. No, I mean, this dude is, is absolutely one of the, one of the like operators. This person has a movement to them. And they're also armed. He's got a big, like pistol, laser pistol, uh, under holstered under one arm. Um, and he's wearing it openly, unlike the others who are probably holding weapons, uh, in secret. And he, uh, and he says, um, you can come in and talk to the pastor a moment if you like before the sermon, but I got to check and make sure that you don't have any weapons. Safety has been an issue. <clears throat> I understand. I think that you can understand our hesitation at relinquishing our weapons to walk into a room with a stranger while all of you are armed. And I kind of like look around the room. Uh, and he, he shakes his head and he, uh, he says, um, Pastor Lau's a man of God. You don't have anything to fear, but Berkman's had some trouble of late. We can't be too careful about strangers. You understand, I'm sure. And it gives you a steely gaze that Mm -hmm. you take to mean, that's not a question, that's a statement. You understand and you're going to comply. Cool. Um, I would like to make use of my telepath uh-huh. Actually, <laughs> actually, well, I want to use. Do I? I can't. I don't know. I can't decide if I want to use my telepathic thing or if I want to use the. No, I want to use telepath. Um, to read his thoughts. Okay. I want to know what he's thinking, like whether or not they mean us any harm. 
or if yeah, right. Because now, like, now you have you have two you have two angles on that, right? You can read his <clears throat> excuse me, you can read his mind to think. Mm -hmm. So this is, he, you know, you, you try to get in there and see if he's like, just five more minutes, five more minutes, Cletus, and then we can laser these stupid people. Um, yeah. Or, which is what I would think if I were him, I would just be constantly thinking about the horrible things I was about to do. Um, <laughs> or you can use your precognitive ability to know, like, what's going to happen in the next few, so you, you can hang on to know what's that. But that doesn't go far enough ahead for you, right? Like, right. How, long does, oh, yeah. how long can you precog? Like, Only one minute. Yeah, so right. Like, so chances are pretty good you're not going to get anything. like, yeah, socked in the back of that. So hold on to that one. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So you want to you want to make a uh, he needs to make a mental effect save, I believe. Yes. Okay. So he's like he's a he's a goon. He's like a church goon. But he's not nobody. Uh, let's see how he does. I mean, according to Booker, he can't have <laughs> that much mental ability, right? Yes. Yeah, he's a crazy moron. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, you 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 <laughs> peel his mind, you peel his mind like a grape. Uh, so he is, uh, let's see, he's he's nervous, um, but he's also trained to subdue feelings of like fear or nervousness. Uh, and when you read his thoughts, uh, he's he's praying, uh, just like not because he thinks God is listening or because he thinks he needs help, but it's like a mantra in his head. And he's, he's like praying to himself about like, uh, blessed is the shepherd who leads his flock across the desert. And like, he's, he's re repeating this to himself to like keep himself calm, which means that he's got something to feel nervous about. But on, yeah, on the surface, he's, he's, he's just friendly, like a little a amiable, but friendly in that vaguely threatening way of like, like the way cops are, where they're like, I'm just here to help you, but I might also like do terrible things to you in your life. But he's fine. So uh yeah, that's that's what he's thinking. What do you want to do? Um I'll hand him my pistol, but I'm keeping my kirpan. Yeah, okay. So hmm. Space is cosmopolitan. I'm gonna roll to see if he would like have any idea whether it's more than just like a knife or not. Well, it's a, a korban's a full sword. Yeah, yeah, but like yeah. it's it's not like you're you're not yeah, you're walking around with a, like a battle axe. Like, yeah, I yeah. I don't think he. Okay, so he um he, he takes the the gun uh and he puts it. <laughs> so there's someone next to him with a basket. Usually that's used to like take money like tithes yeah. and he just puts it in the basket and he turns, he turns back to you and he looks at the, the sword that you have. And, and he, mm -hmm. you can see him and, and Nomi, you can hear him do this in his head. You, you interrupt, he interrupts the prayer and he, he's thinking about like whether this is a threat or not. And he's like, I don't, should I take it? Like it, it's not a gun. And she's, she's so little, like he, he's trying to judge whether it's going to be a threat or not. Do you say anything or do you just let him come to the end of that, that line of thinking? Um, I'll try and kind of interrupt his thinking by handing him my laser pistol. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're trying to short circuit his his process. Um, let's have you roll I'll something. Say, I'll like, let's. I'll say like out loud, like, "All right, then we understand." And I like put the thing, my gun, in the basket. Yeah, it's like you're not. It's funny. I want to get you to roll talk, but you're not talking. You're. I mean, you, you say a thing. Let's use talk. Go talk, talk right. with charisma. Um, and if you if you succeed, he'll just he'll just be like, oh, okay, guns are more important. I'm, and he'll he'll forget that that Karan sword is more than like it could be a threat. Five. Okay. All right. So Wait, he you say ah, I rolled a one in one of those? yeah. We roll your one. Yep. So I roll a d six instead. So you're rolling. Oh my god. Hey, no, Do we it did again. this before, and I rolled it again. Yeah. Yeah. Do it again. Three. You can't roll one. Okay, so three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so you yes. you do it just and he's so he, he clutch. He look. He gives one last look at it, and he he's like, well, I can't. And I think what happens, the thought he has here isn't so much that you've distracted him, but he comes to the conclusion too quickly, and the conclusion that he comes to is. I would be no better than those who oppress me if I were to take away this woman's like obvious religious paraphernalia, right? Like if I take this from her, it would be a, it would be a crime uh, against her religion, and I, that's like I can't abide. So he he like makes that decision probably more quickly than he should have, and he turns he turns to you, Nomi, and he he takes the gun, 
Uh, and he, uh, and he, he says, uh, well, thank you. I appreciate your, and you can see he's like, you like put him off now. He's like, he's lost a little bit of his, his, uh, attentiveness, but he takes and he puts it in the basket and the, the woman holding the basket, uh, kind of walks off and he, uh, he says, um, uh, no, it's, it's everybody's right to defend themselves. We'll make sure those get back in your hands when you're on your way out. Security is very important, personal or otherwise. Yeah, please this way. Now, do you know me? Do you have any other weapons on you? Yes, I do. I have yeah, two laser pistols. I only gave him one. All right. Uh, would you like to attempt to hide your other laser pistol uh, physically or otherwise? If it's not already hidden. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying is like we can kind of like roll assuming you had <laughs> hidden it somewhere and see if he notices it. Sure. Um, okay. Where, where do you, where do you hide your second laser pistol? Is it like in a holster at the small of your back or in a, in a boot or where do you got it? Yes. Holster, small of my back. First thing. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, let's, let's see if he notices the, the, the bulge, uh, at your back. Make a sneak roll, I think with dexterity. I think that's the way to do this. I roll a one. I quit nine. Yes. Okay, so nine's the number to beat. Uh, I'll roll for him. He gets six. He does not notice it. Yes. Tell out loud. Tell out loud. Security is not <laughs> as good as he thinks it is. Okay. All right. So you, uh, yeah, you you go by uh, into the uh, into the other room, and this room, <clears throat> this room is uh, an office. It's got another door leading somewhere else. That door is closed. Uh, there are. Uh, like three chairs, uh, and these chairs look like foreign to this environment. <clears throat> they look nice and old. They're wood. Uh, they look like they've been hand like upholstered, um, and they're they're worn, right? Like they they're dark stain, but the backs of them uh, have been worn light. Um, and then there's a big uh, a big desk, not not ostentatious, just like the kind of desk you see in every sort of space station. Uh, it's just like a metal, plain metal desk uh, that's been welded uh, on either side. And on the desk, uh, there is a uh, synthetic, like leather, like sort of blotter pad. There is a computer. It's currently turned off, built into the surface of the desk. Behind it is a big oil painting of a man with like a long beard and like kind of reddish robes holding two like stone blocks with like writing on them and he's standing on like a mountain and there are a bunch of other people looking up at this guy you don't have any idea what this is a painting of uh there's like a storm in the background but it looks pretty like impressive um so there's this this big painting behind the guy uh behind the desk and the rest of the the rest of the office is pretty uh pretty quiet there isn't really much else maybe there's like a sidebar behind the desk with a um a decanter on it so they lead you into the into the office and then uh the um the the escort the guy who took your gun says uh pastor will be right in and he walks out and closes the door so you're alone the two of you you're alone in, in his office um okay can we do like uh, maybe like a notice roll to like see if there's anything um indicating I don't know it's weird because you kind of describe this as like a room full of things that seem like they wouldn't really belong to a pastor almost like you're saying this stuff looks looks nicer than it oh uh, the chairs are the only thing that that makes like the the painting isn't really a painting it's like a print of a painting and the desk okay. is pretty like bog standard you've seen it a thousand times the chairs are weird the chairs are an unusual thing um, okay. But the rest of yeah, the rest of. Can I inspect them? Yeah, yeah. You can make a notice roll. Take a take a look at the chairs. Yeah, make a uh, yeah, make that roll. Ten. Okay. Yeah, they're they're made out of some some like dense wood. Um, one of them has a a big like scuff on one side, like a big dent in the side of it, a uh, chip out of the wood. Um. The thing is, they're hand stitched. Like the the um, the cushions are hand stitched, and they've been used. They're they're bleached from from use and soft uh, from age. Um, 
and uh, they look like they've they've been they're, they're old. They're antiques, but not well kept antiques. They just look like old chairs that have been used a lot. Uh, the three of them they match. Uh, they're from a set. Okay. So what makes them weird other than just they're old? Um, they're old. They're wood. They're the only wood furniture you've seen like on this oh, planet okay. outside of. I mean, Tril Trillion wouldn't use wood. They'd use like carbon fiber hyper fabrics and shit. Um, yeah, it's just they're like they're old and kind of like not made out of stuff you would expect. This isn't like a forest planet. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to get up and check behind the painting, see if it's covering anything. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. You can make the same, make the same roll. Uh, there's something like vaguely threatening about this, the subject matter of the painting. Like this isn't like a, you know, an art appreciation role or anything, but like mm -hmm. the dude with the tablets looks pissed and everyone else is looking at him oh. with this combination of like fear and also awe. And they're just like, ah, oh, this guy, he's like a big deal. And we're kind of scared of him. And like the painting is meant to make this guy look both inspiring or scary, uh, kind of depending on your, your internal, uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the painting doesn't like it's, it's in a, it's a print and it's in a frame. The frame is just plastic and it's just up on the, uh, okay. it's up on the, uh, up on the wall. Yeah. Uh, and while you're looking at it, uh, the door on the other side of the, uh, the room opens and, uh, we turn, but before we can see who it is, we cut back to Booker. Booker, you are looking at your calm pad on your wrist and it's like psh, connection severed. What are you going to do? <clears throat> Tap it. That, does that work? Okay. No? I mean, that would be the Booker thing to do. Is be like... Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, after then, I guess, you said they passed him when he went in the, the alleyway? Yes. Those two, the guys that were looking for you, like, yeah. Went by. Okay. Um, then after a few more moments after that, Booker will get up and mm -hmm. if the alleyway like goes, it has other exits or whatever. He'll go throughout. He'll exit out that way. Not the same way. If there's another route to get back to circle back to where he was, he'll do that to kind of, um, go on the perimeter and see if one getting closer to the building will help the signal to tap in. Um, is there any sort of, I mean, Booker has limited knowledge in terms of like potentially overriding a jamming signal. Mm -hmm. Um, like he's not, you know, he's not Riley. <laughs> he's, <laughs> I don't, um, but yeah, <clears throat> he's, uh, he's got some knowledge of that. So you, I guess you tell me or if you, unless you want me to make a, a luck or. Yeah. If you want to make, I mean, you can make a role to, to kind of try to suss out what might be the problem. Right. Yeah. Um, just, to, just to make sure. Let's I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a jamming signal, but. Yeah. Let's, let's have you make a, a no, a no roll with intelligence. Oh yeah, right. No is the thing. I did not know. Success, I think. Uh yeah. Yeah, you got a seven. So you're not you're not totally sure. Um yeah, like it, it I think you're you you're you know enough to know that you're probably on course with the jamming thing. And it either means that all communications are jammed or all communications outside a certain number of like specific channels are uh, are jammed. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. ECM's a serious business. Now I'm trying it's to It's also remember. not the kind of it's also very out of place. Like if your if your connection is jammed down here, someone is is very intentionally doing it and yeah. it doesn't it's it doesn't make a lot of sense for this situation. Yeah. Okay. Um when he left the the com or yeah, the compound, the church entrance. Was it just the two that that saw that or did they like did they shout out? Did they do the whole like, you know, Assassin's Creed. He's over there. Get him. Like, no. Or something like that. Yeah, no, no, it didn't. It wasn't like it wasn't like you alerted a guard who started ringing a bell and then all of a sudden everyone's grabbing pitchforks yeah, and shit. Exactly uh, it right. was just those two who were like, hey, can we help you, friend? And then, yeah. Uh, so you you don't you don't feel or see, honestly, like anybody 
there's no eyes on you really people are just like uh yeah there was exactly there was a brief whistle but like shit has not come down on your head yet and the place doesn't seem to have been escalated into a position of of alarm and then i i'm trying to remember too i don't remember if we went with just a small compliment of just us or if we had like arnahan and like a strike team on standby if needed i don't think i don't think we did no just trying to remember who we had on on mission I mean, you could leave and you could get out of range of the jammer and you could call them and be like, well, no, oh, that's, we that's what I'm saying. If they were nearby. Yeah. No, I, I don't I'm believe, saying. I don't believe that they were. I don't have a note here that says like waiting in the wings. Um, yeah. Nope. Um, I mean, okay. they're here to be on standby, but they're not like in the neighborhood. They're not like drinking. Right, right. They're not like street. immediately in the neighborhood. They still could be called, I'm sure. But I'm just saying yep. in terms of uh, how close they are. Uh, would Booker know how far he needs to get to relay a message? Not with so a that seven. At least... not, not, not with a seven. No. Shit. They're like a techie looking guy nearby and be like, hey, do you got an idea? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, um, you can th- there there can be literally any kind of person nearby if you roll well enough on a connect roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um that doesn't really make sense though. Like me. no, but like you this is the thing about connect. Like if you're like, what I really need right now is someone who is like a friend of the Empire who is already in this community who is gonna be like, hey, hey, over here, and like usher me into a building. That's what connect is for. Like you can you can do that. You can just make Roll that person connect happen. With what? Adam? You said? With charisma. With charisma. Okay. If you want to, yeah. Hey. hey. Okay. All right. So yeah, what I mean, do you want someone who can do you want to just have someone who can help you with this tech problem? Or do you want to like go more extreme and and have them be like No, I think actively pro Empire who will like straight up want to try to help you in this situation. Why not both? I mean, you, you're going to have to, you, you rolled early. So this, this is not, this roll does not count. You actually have to make the roll. I didn't give you the difficulty yet. You tell me and I, I give you a difficulty based on how ludicrous it is. Yeah. Yeah. I get, um, I get you. yeah so what do you, what do you want? Uh, I think what do you want now, a person to be? For now, somebody potentially that can, oh, fuck though. Cause if they're not actually a part of the, the empire, it doesn't make sense that Booker would be like, Hey, check out my palm thing. <laughs> you know, like that, that mm. would have repercussions. So yes, I guess that that kind of forces me to go down the empire friendly um, contact. Okay, all right. So this is this is somebody who is like also watching you and who is willing to uh, to who steps in now to help uh, and who is pro pro the empire or at least like probably in this planet pro high church as part of the empire. Okay, mm-hmm. um, let me get a name thing. I'll get you to roll. Um, Difficulty is gonna be ten. Uh, for that, um, and uh, pretty tough depending on what I'm rolling. What am I rolling? Uh, it's gonna be same thing, it's gonna be with charisma, uh, connect. Okay, what? Oh boy, okay. All right. I was gonna on a seven, like if you could get it, if you could get a seven to nine, or like a yeah, if you're gonna get a seven to nine, I was give you someone that was like complicated uh, or whatever. But uh, no, I think the opposite. A bad, a bad happens, um, and uh, you turn and uh, their uh, yeah backup. Uh, their they their backup is is on you. So you turn and you see a group of three guys. Um, one of them with a rifle uh, walking down the street um, and the person in the lead is like pushing people away and they see you and the guy with the rifle brings it up and the other one puts his hand and like pushes the rifle down so he doesn't shoot. Uh, and then they start jogging towards you. They're maybe like 10 meters away. I'm going to full sprint away from them. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to run for it. Okay, so they chase you. Where Are you running towards anywhere in particular or? Uh. Right now, no, just far enough to break again. Right, just trying to get away away somewhere. Okay. All right. uh, It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be an exert roll. So you can roll exert. uh, You can roll it with strength or dexterity. I don't care which. 
Um, I'm going to give them a plus two because this is their home turf. Uh, would you like me to roll first, or do you want to roll to see how well you do, and then I'll try to beat you? You roll. Let's switch it up. Okay. All right. Okay, here you go. The number to beat is 13. They catch me. So they don't necessarily catch you, but you have nowhere else to run. So you you take a corner. You can hear them behind you. They turn, and you're there's there's a uh, you you lead them on a chase, and uh, you even try to like knock over a watermelon cart, but they jump over it, and uh, and you end up you come around a corner, and then you stop because you are at a dead end. <laughs> there is a cave wall, and there is uh, another air air processor unit. There's some some above you. There's some some lines where laundry is drying in the sort of like backdraft of the of the air processor. Um, there are a couple of uh, of like windows, um, but there's there's no there's no clear escape. And they come around the corner, and uh, it's two two men and a and a woman, and they they start walking towards you. They're they all have laser rifles. One of them is a rifle of some kind. The other two do not appear to be armed, or they have not drawn weapons yet. You can't see it uh, at this distance. Okay. Booker, knowing that he's, he's as they're coming around, he's got his laser rifle at the ready. And he's just like, whoa, oh, easy, easy there. Easy now. No one needs to die here. So they see the weapon. The guy with the rifle this time snaps his up. Uh, the other two uh, hold. And um, the woman, the one who put her hand on the rifle before, she doesn't stop him this time. Do you point your rifle at them? You have a rifle pointed at you now. Yeah. I mean, it's not pointed like directly. Like, <laughs> you know, it's more like kind mm -hmm. of like easy, easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the woman puts her hands up. And they're all dressed similarly to kind of the rest of the people around here, like kind of plain earth tone, like overalls or like a, a kind of like, a jumpsuit, um, like laborers' uh, clothes, and uh, yeah, the guy with the rifle keeps it trained. And he's looking like right down the down the scope at you. Um, Do they look like they know what they're doing with these rifles. Do you want to make a notice roll? Yes, I would like to to because that's what okay. he'd be doing. He'd be assessing, yeah. you know, sure. the, the threat level here. Yep. Notice with intelligence. Nice. Although that wouldn't have the, saved me. Really goddamn 13, Adam. The woman, the woman is dressed like one of them, but she's not one of them. Uh, the it's it's not like her. The, the planet has a, a cosmopolitan ethnicity, so it's not that. But there's something about the way that she moves and the way they defer to her, and like she's a little, she's used to dressing like someone she's not, but she hasn't quite fully put on this this thing um so she's uh dark skin she has uh her hair in cornrows um she has a kind of um like a, a take no shit effect to her and they follow her lead um like her authority is absolute in this in this group of, of dudes. Yeah. So um, from from what I'm getting, and so something here. about that, like she she's got her shit together. These guys look like they are just like probably the kind of people that Nomi noticed in the church earlier. Yeah. Uh, like they he's he's got a handle on the rifle. The the you know like the the stock of the rifle is worn from use, um, but they don't have the effect of killers. She might. She's got she's steely. This one. Mm -hmm. Do I, yeah, from that though, do I ascertain that she is perhaps a gun for hire that's just there or? I don't know if you can go that, that far necessarily. Um, but okay. you are, you are getting the, you're getting the, the look of her. I think she's going to do the same. She's going to do the same. Um, yeah. just checking each other out. Give her a plus see, one. See what's up. Yeah. Like, other. nice. Okay. So she gets, she gets a good, a good read on you too. Um, she can't read your mind or anything. Well, maybe she can. She could be a psychic. You don't know. But she gets a good she gets a good look at you. And the two of you, there's a moment where as practiced like operatives, the two of you look at each other like, all right, shit's serious now. And you say, nobody's got to die. And she she says, uh, I was thinking the same thing. We just want to talk, Mr. Graves. That's all. Oh. You just want to talk, do you? Well, then, she let's nods. talk. 
What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You don't look like the normal I... churchgoer, despite what you may think you look like. I live here, officer. You're the stranger. What are you and your team doing in our commune? Trying to figure out what you guys are doing. She squints. We're just trying to live. Kill anybody. I find that very difficult to believe, Mr. Greaves. I've seen your records. Oh, yeah. When the time comes for it, I'm sure as you would do the same. I don't just go around killing people needlessly. That's a matter of opinion, don't you think, Mr. Graves? Yes, I'd say so. I can agree there. You've seen my record, so you understand that although I may be outnumbered, there's really only one threat here, and that's you. The way I see it, we are just trying to maintain peace. This community has done nothing to warrant the attentions of House Crux. And yet, here you are, you and your soldiers, here on Berkman, in New Antioch, where you don't belong. Don't belong, eh? Know much about your leader there, Talat Lao? She scoffs, and the, the scoff reads to you as a, like, ha, you think you know anything. Like, the thing that you just said is so laughable, I'm not even going to respond. So she's kind of, like, like, snorts when you say that. In my experience, churches that are actually trying to save people do not feel the need to operate like a military installation. Or at least... A poorly outfitted one. The guy with the rifle like takes that a little personally. Like he kind of like steps forward, like, hey, shut up. He doesn't say anything, but he jostles a little when you say that. Uh and uh she, she puts her hand up. She puts her hand up, like, don't don't let him don't let him rile you up. And uh and she says, the nature of things here on Berkman, which you clearly don't understand, is that the people have to make an effort to defend themselves. Well, why don't you help me understand? As he says that, um, mm -hmm. I can use the authority. The idea here is to try to get her talking and like play into the fact that, you know, he's like, this is a cause she believes in. Hopefully that's what he's playing on to try to just glean something from her. Maybe some, maybe she'll say something that, you know, and so he'd be using authority to try to get them to follow my instructions of like, tell me about that, you know? So you're you're putting on your cop voice? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, cop voice. Trying to your uncanny, your voice. uncanny charisma. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that makes others instinctively follow your instructions at level one. This is a kind of charm, personal magnetism. Once per day, you can make a request for an NPC who's not openly hostile to you. So this isn't that, but you can make you can make a talk roll uh, based okay. on your your authority. Um, she hasn't shot yet. <laughs> I get what you're saying though. She's got a gun up at me. So I mean, she doesn't, but yeah, she's responsible for the people that, that do. But you're yeah, you're putting on your officer Greaves voice. And uh so what do you what do you you uh what do you, what do you want if you succeed? Um I want her to potentially reveal some information about their organization, what they're doing that grieves them. He's just trying to gain info that may be useful. You know, that, that kind of thing where when somebody's really, really emotional and they believe in something, they might overshare some information that, you know, for a moment, you know, their, their, their walls might come down. Right. For a moment just try then, to trick know, her into them back up and be like, damn you, you know? Right. And this is just, this is just officer, officer Greaves doing the like interrogation thing where you're like, I'm just going to say some stuff and then you're going to incriminate yourself. Mm -hmm. So talk okay. with charisma. Yeah. People don't, people in the empire don't have Miranda rights. So <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Son of a yeah. bitch. 
<laughs> All right. So she she hears it, and when you when you put on that effect, it does have an effect on the the two of them, and they're like, "Oh, this is some like, like this." You were speaking exactly like what they expected you to be like. Put on the cop voice affirms in their minds, like, "Oh yeah, this is this is one of the bad guys from the Empire. Come back to our land to tell us how to how to do our job, right?" And so uh, she she smiles slightly. And she shakes her head and she says, uh, I think you're going to find, officer, that kind of talk's not going to get you anywhere on Berkman. We don't take kindly to imperial metal. Dogs, yeah, I understand. Well, whatever. And she, she, she shakes her head and, and she says, oh, don't get me wrong. There's a place for your noble empire, but not here on Berkman. Not for you. Not for your high church, not for the trillion ring. Well, best all y'all pack up and head on home, or things are only going to get worse. Now, unfortunately, it seems with you and all of you with you, he like looks at the other two. Yeah. Keep operating the way that you are. Innocent people keep getting caught in the crossfire. And that's not what I or the Empire want. Talk all high and mighty, like you guys are locals here, protecting your home. And that's great. But how many locals die because of that? How sloppy your organization is. Say what you want about the Empire. At least most of the time, speak for myself anyways, I know what the hell I'm doing. Well... Like giving a monkey a knife. Yeah, and that, like, again, that kind of talk, like, the dudes are like, God damn it, like, this authoritarian, noble-ass motherfucker coming down here telling us how to live. Like, he just, he just called me a monkey. And the two of them are kind of, like, looking at each other, like, can we just fucking blast this dude already? And she's the one that's keeping them from, from yeah, getting getting angry. And uh, well, he's doing says, this on uh, purpose because he wants their oh, yeah. to be up there. <laughs> totally. They're, yeah. And you're, you're, I mean, let's, let's have you make a roll, right? Like make, make that, make another talk roll. And this is just to see if you are, if you are, uh, breaking them, breaking them down, right? If, if they're, and I'll, I'll oppose you with her, uh, her lead. Um, okay. okay. I got a nine. So you can do the same. Okay. So you see there's a moment where they're they're like, oh, like getting pissed, like, oh, this fucking guy. And then she just looks at one of them and he he's like like shrinks like a like a kick dog, where he's just like, Okay, sorry. <laughs> Gets back to the like discipline, back to the weapon. Um and uh and she she looks at you and she she says, um You don't have to try all this. Like you said. Nobody needs to die. You can walk out of here. You and the rest of your crux troops can get back on that ship and you can leave Berkman. Nobody else got to get hurt. And the the man who isn't the guy with the rifle steps aside to like leave a a path so that you can you can walk by. And uh and she says uh We'll just take you outside the commune. You can head on back to that embassy of yours. You can go home. You see him thinking about it. She looks it. at you. Yeah, like, see? Let me ask to get hurt. You'll forgive me if I don't trust walking past three armed individuals who are Less than happy with my present here. You put your guns down. I'll, I'll put down mine. Officer, <laughs> if we wanted you dead, you'd be dead by now. And ain't nobody in this commune would rat us out. <laughs> Again. As a show of, she says, as a, as a show of uh, good faith, and she, she gestures to, like, the dude. Uh, and, and he like lowers the weapon and kind of looks at you like to see if you're doing the same. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, as he does, is he the only one that's armed and has an, a weapon drawn? He, yeah, he's the only one that has a weapon readied. Yeah. Is her hands hovering around her her pistol at all or anything like that? Oh, uh, you can't like she she's got uh she's got like a, a coat like a jacket on, but not like a big like heavy trench coat or anything. Whip out a rocket launcher. Uh, you would it would be ill advised of you to think she wasn't armed, but it doesn't look like she's not in gunslinger stance, like waiting for you to draw on her. Yeah, so their idea is what they're going to escort me out of what the yeah they're going to let you they're going to let you walk past them and then they're going to walk behind you to make sure that you leave their little community and your ass doesn't come back. Yeah, for a moment, he thinks about like just taking them by surprise and shooting her in the face, <laughs> but, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, uh, then he thinks better of it. He's like. Very well. He starts to lower his weapon. And he's like, I'm going to need a little more space. You understand? Like, he like goes like this, like. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they give you they give you some room. And then he starts walking forward. Yeah. OK, so you, you walk, you walk past them. She falls in uh, behind you, kind of off to your right. And Rifle Dude is behind you on the left, and you kind of lose sight of the other guy because he's somewhere outside of your, your field of vision. Mm -hmm. um, she's maybe three paces behind you. Yeah. Uh, he's a little bit more. Obviously, the whole time he's doing the whole, you know, like checking behind. Yep. Yeah, and she nods, That's and she's it. like, just, just keep walking. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, the group of you leave the, you leave the, the alleyway. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we... I guess let, let's stick with this. Let's finish. Let's finish out on this. So, what do you, what do you want to do? Are you gonna, are you gonna leave, or are you waiting for a chance to to spring it, do something crazy? You mean like blow up a blimp or something? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you see a big blimp float by in the cave up at the ceiling, and it says kebabs on it. No, I just want to. Yeah. Um. If he. Are we walking again? Like as we're walking out, is there varying levels of density in the crowd? Like the crowd's fairly sparse. Um, I think you can hear a church bell ringing somewhere in the back. Like, I mean, it's not a church bell; it's a speaker playing a wave file of a church bell. But same difference. Uh, and people are starting to move in that direction, so the streets are a little bit a uh, little bit empty. And um, yeah, there are people who are noticing. They like recognize her and they see what's going on. You're not being like led out like a prisoner, but like right, there's yeah. attention that a few people pick up on. Right. A man right, man well. like pu pushes his kids back in the house. They're like on their way to church and they're like, nope, nope, we're going back inside. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was asking just in case, like if we as I was being led out, like encountered a little bit dense patch of people for a second, Booker might like feign tripping and then just fucking try to scurry along the, like, the ground you know amongst the crowd as they lose line of sight i mean you could you could try to look for that that opportunity if you'd like to to make one sure um yeah I'm let's just, have I'm you make to, i guess i can before i make that decision how hard would it be yeah. to come back you know to this area that that i'm in because you know we didn't really talk about like the the exterior potential defenses and if they have people looking or you know what what kind of stuff they have it going on as i understood it was a fairly public area you know and then there's the compound there's the the church entrance and stuff so well, so the, the what, what i refer to what i refer to as the compound is like the neighborhood it's okay, so, uh, okay you know several several dozen housing units and then a larger community center unit at the back it's a prefab they built a bunch of these this one happens to be a religious uh com commune or whatever yeah. that houses a bunch of things and it's a little more crowded than the rest remember we talked about how like they had been attracting a bunch more people so right. it's possible that you could run into a crowd coming back would be difficult because they would probably be like all right everybody like keep an eye out for this narc ass motherfucker who's gonna try to come back here and cause trouble if you see him let everybody know but it's not like there's like huge security gates and like laser are weapons that'll blast you if you try to get in yeah. like it's not a fortress yeah yeah okay uh given that um yeah i'll at least try it 
If there's an, if there, he, basically I'm going to make a roll to look for an opening to, to zip away, whether, whether that be a sound, you know, so something startling them. Uh, I don't know. Would you like to make a luck roll to create this opportunity? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because Do it. Booker wants to make sure that his, his, you know, his unit that he's a part of is safe. Leaving that area okay. is in direct opposition of that. Yeah. So he will try. Yeah, if you succeeded the luck roll, then yes, there's like an opportunity that you might be able to take advantage of. Otherwise, you don't see a clear opportunity to like run for it or anything like that. And then you can decide what you want to do. So make that luck roll first. Okay. Woo! All right. So what do you think that looks like? Is it like a crowd of people that passes, like an oblivious crowd of people that passes a little too close and you can try to use as a, an opportunity to get away? Or what do you think? Describe um, the opportunity, and then we'll see if you can take advantage of it. I think it is two people that are arguing. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Man and another man arguing uh, on the side, like one of these prefab units, and their argument like gets it, it boils over and boils over to the point where one of them just gets shoved, and mm. it's like you can't talk to me like that. Then just poof, goes like that. Yeah, and pushes like two, them. Two yeah, two guys are fighting over something, and then one of them like gets out of the argument, but in a really like I'm not paying attention way, or like he turns yeah. too fast, and yeah, and before your your not captors, but before the people that you're with can react, uh, you have a chance to to do something as you kind of get separated or jostled away from them. Yeah, my cool. idea was All like right. hopefully that if you let it happen, like he pushes the other one and it goes into like the the three of them, like their area. Like like, yeah, I think it disrupt it disrupts the the sort of tight perimeter they have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So we see that there is that moment where it's like Booker has a chance to do something, run for it, whatever, and then we'll uh, we'll cut to break. So when we get back, uh, we'll jump back in to see uh, Nomi and the Amira and their conversation with the pastor, and then we'll see if Booker gets shot full of holes by a laser rifle. Yeah, Don't we'll go see. anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Part two. We'll play Farberona when we get back. 